pumpkin farm's coming along pretty good. It's kind of slow, but it's only got eight pods, and pumpkin doesn't grow that fast. That and I haven't really been timing out here. We got 53 cacti, so this thing's pumping along very nicely. And this is our makeshift sugarcane farm. It's still a little broken, but it's pretty much all in place. Looks like that's not being powered for long enough. But basically we have our block update detectors here using the redstone. We have our block update detector to detect the pistons firing just like our pumpkin farm. The difference is in the redstone. This hits a repeater that comes up here that then brings a line of redstone over to our engine. But we do have a redstone torch to stop the power while these are in detect mode. So basically when it fires off it sends a signal that turns this off, turns the torch on, powers the engine for one pulse. Looks like I'm gonna have to make a pulse lengthener on that. So pretty much the same thing we had to do with the pumpkins so that we can pick up all of the sugar cane. I decided to go along the top instead of the bottom this time for no particular reason, just to kind of see if it would work well. And in creative it does, so we're gonna give it a try. I'm trying a little bit of decor here, the oak wood to match our pistons, oak in the middle, going for some stone brick down each side. I'm gonna repeat these sugarcane on this side as well. Just have my little water pit behind here with the pistons and duplicate the redstone. Pretty simple build and I can even borrow this block update detector using one of these bits of redstone and just kind of loop it up over the top so probably from here put a repeater in the middle drop it on this side so it should work out pretty well once I get it complete so we've made some modifications here to our sugarcane farm I've prepped this side a little bit to receive pistons and be ready to plant as well but let me show you what we did up top here. I basically duplicated what we have in our pumpkin farm for our timer since this needs to run for basically the exact same length of time. But I've added some jack-o'-lanterns for lighting and I've had to adjust it slightly to fit in this tight space and the fact that we have an obstruction here so instead of pulling a redstone line off of that square and into this feed, I actually pulled the redstone here out of this block. I used blocks instead of redstone because we have the redstone line down here. So block there, drop down so it doesn't interact with our iron transport pipe and runs here to power the engine. So it's just slightly shorter than the other one but it still works just fine and looks like we're not going to be lucky enough to have the cane grow for us but I do have this side all prepped and ready to receive a redstone torch here and it'll be then connected and then I can run the redstone line there so this is all working nice it's actually picking up the sugar cane and we're up to 15 now so we should be good to go Boy, I think I have grow outgrown my little factory here. I have it very, very densely packed all along those power conduits from these steam engines here, the steam dynamos. I got my battery here, the capacitor. There's this capacitor as well. There's got a little bit of power left to go. And then I got this igneous extruder still making obsidian. I'm going to have to kick out an awful amount of that 
and I'll tell you why next episode. But I got my fluid transposer. This I use to make these batteries here. Um, looks like we might have ran out of stuff here. Come on. There we go. So the fluid transposer was to move the redstone into the frames so that these could then be completed. And then I have a magma crucible which I used to make the redstone into the destabilized redstone that fed into the fluid transposer. So this is all just thermal eh, expansion stuff. I will however be using this magma crucible probably to convert some of this into lava. Not entirely decided on that yet because the dynamos, there's a magmatic dynamo that allows us to burn lava for power and I could probably get a pretty sweet setup going on that. I had a similar setup in 6.4, 1.64, but we also have several bits of oil nearby from Buildcraft which we can use a refinery on and get a fairly large amount of fuel that we can burn instead and it's actually more energy efficient than even magma. The only downside is you have to have oil to convert using a refinery and so you do have kind of a limited quantity. I can't just go hog wild and make 40 or 50 of these to run off of it. It would actually be the compression dynamo anyway. But if I was doing lava, I'd have to pump the nether and probably have a tesseract. So downsides and upsides. Not sure how we're going to solve the whole power crisis. But until we do, I'm just going to relay batteries and capacitors over to our quarry and start digging a hole. So I built this nice little long tunnel here that runs to where we're going to be placing our quarry. And I'm going to go ahead and put some railway tracks down so that we can get to there quickly and efficiently. So we need to first get some preparation here and I'll just put a chest and a button here so we can just fly on down and go straight to where we need to be. This will take a while. So we have our quarry running right now. This is a rather convoluted piping system because I didn't really have a whole lot of space to work with. But we have a filter pulling out dirt at the moment since we're going to want cobble and gravel. But after we get a little bit of each, I'm likely going to throw both the cobble and gravel into the void pipe filter as well with these diamond pipes. And so we won't have to worry about filling up our chest with useless cobble. But I do have other projects that we're going to need the cobble for. And this gravel can be pulverized into a flint, which can help our sag mill be more efficient. So we're going to want to keep both of those for now. And we're going to see what this comes out with. This is a chunk loader, so it's going to run even if I'm logged off. So this will continue until these batteries run out of juice, which will be a little while. Uh, I Actually, I don't think I have enough storage to continue taking all of the gravel and cobble. So I'm going to let it run for just a little bit, get a few stacks of cobble and gravel in each, and then we're going to go ahead and add the filter. So we have been running this for just a short while now. As you can see, we have flint coming through in addition to the gravel. We've pulled up some clay already, some cobblestone. I think we're at a pretty decent set of stacks just for this first trial run. Looks like, oh, we've already got some tin ore in here too. 
So, I think we're doing pretty good. Let me go ahead and grab a sampling of our gravel here so that I can add this to our filters. You just drop it in like so, it doesn't consume it at all. Let's add the cobblestone as well. And now we do the same thing for the other three that I have in here. So we got a total of four diamond pipes that are filtering our items for us. Certainly a lot easier than doing a redstone in a solution with hoppers and all sorts of mess. This makes it very condensed to achieve the same thing. There we go. Now we don't have to worry about pulling out useless stuff. See, now we're pulling in some copper and we should stop receiving any kind of cobblestone. As you can see, it's just all going straight into the void pipe. This will make plenty of people cry, I'm sure. All that cobble just going right into the drink. But it's going to keep our boxes nice and empty for us so that we can get actual worthwhile items instead. And as you can see, since we're starting on an ocean, we are actually at Y68. You can already see how far it's made it. Okay, let's just take a dive here. So, it's quite down there to the ocean floor. Looks like it just came across some tin and probably some lead. So, we're actually doing very well. Oh, shouldn't have done this at night. I think we picked a pretty good spot as well. There we go. We are safe. And here's morning. But we're going to go ahead and let this run its course, probably until these batteries die. And we'll give you a report on what we came out with by showing you what's in these chests. So it is now afternoon. It's been running all night. I actually had to recharge the batteries and just started them back up. And let's take a peek at what we got. <laughs> Look at all of this stuff. And this is just one box. Let's see what's in this one. A little bit of redstone, some iron ore, silver, some gold, lapis. But the fact that we're getting redstone and some obsidian in here means we're actually right down about level well, Y13, Y11 most likely. We are almost done with this spot. But if you look, we got fairly decent amount of stuff. I wouldn't call it a great haul, not compared to some, but we did a full 64 by 64 block all of these would be full to the brim I mean right now I have the cobblestone going through again I just removed the filters when I attached the batteries so that we could get some more cobblestone for some brick to do another project but yeah I got chests and chests of ore we are going to be smelting and crushing this ore for quite a while. But you can see I got kind of a convoluted setup so we can kind of move around in here. I'm thinking the next platform I'm going to have to design a little bit better than this so we can feed all of these a little better, a little more proper. Maybe have the chest centralized around the unit here in kind of a U shape. But, you know, not too bad for just barely getting it set up here for the first time on this server. But yeah, look at that. Lots and lots of cobble. And not a broken pick in sight. Such a wonderful trade-off for dealing with energy issues rather than resources. Definitely a very, very nice mod pack, this build craft. And we actually have a little bit of thermal expansion in here with the power cells and we got ender IO running the conduit 
since the energy conduits and thermal expansion were removed and moved to their own mod pack that hasn't been released yet so I'm just crossing my fingers for that day when we can remove all of this pipe work and use item ducts once again but that's our quarry for today you know not too bad I'm gonna go and see if we can find a better source of energy than burning coal you know thinking I'm gonna pump the nether so that will be an interesting project to attend to I just thought I would check on it and I'm not sure if you can see it too well but as the quarry runs across the obsidian down there you can see it just flash real briefly into lava and then the ocean kind of sinks in on it and turns it into obsidian so we're actually going to be getting a lot of obsidian from here you can see it's an entire river of obsidian running from side to side so this will be very useful if we're going to be doing any kind of nether portals and since I do have plans for a gold farm an overworld gold farm at that then I think we're gonna find it very useful I'm thinking it's gonna take us eh, not to be a spoiler but a good 500 blocks of obsidian so we're gonna see how that comes through let's see if it's even coming through in our chest yet Ah yes, there it is. It's kind of tight working through here, so <laughs> you can see we still have all of this stuff to pump out. Oh, Ferris ore. So two full stacks of obsidian right there, and that's not counting what's already probably ending up in our chest. But these wooden transport pipes with the redstone is barely able to pump out fast enough to keep this thing empty. Oh, we're getting up to three stacks now. So, I could put one more wooden transport pipe out the bottom, which is why I have that hole knocked in the middle there. But we haven't had a need for it just yet. If I just dump all this cobble, we could probably fix... Well, no, that would be after it gets pumped out. So, I would have to scale back the output from these energy cells. Right now they're at 150 each. I usually run four cells at 200 in our 6. Point, well, our 1.6.4 world. So I have run it faster and have needed to supplement these with the item ducts that exist in that version. But since we don't have that and we only have three cells at the moment, I think 150 is a pretty good compromise. But it takes a lot of resources to generate 10 million RF. So, <laughs> I got two steam dynamos that take nearly two hours or so to even charge these to 80%. But magmatic dynamos, all in series, running off of magma from the nether, since it's virtually limitless, I think we're going to find a pretty good source of energy in that. But I gotta find a better place to pump first. Look, our first diamond of the batch. So far, it's almost paid for itself. <laughs> Once we cover the one diamond each that those power cells cost. But you can see here just how ma many resources we actually have got out of this quarry so far. You know, that is quite a bit of resources. All these 64 stacks of ores and coal and redstone I mean, and a diamond. You can't go wrong when you're getting diamonds. But look at that. One, two, three and a half stacks of obsidian just on its own. I think we're doing just fine with this. And you can see we're getting plenty of cobblestone as well so that we can go ahead and smelt that into other types of stuff like bricks or maybe even use them as pistons and things like that for any other projects me we, me you may want to do but until then let's go ahead and cut those off again just so we don't have too much stuff filling up our box we definitely want to be able to move this to the next spot without 
too much hassle. So we'll get that cut off and I'll go find a place to maybe pump the nether. It looks like we are coming up on some structure. Hopefully it's a desert stronghold of some sort. Ruins perhaps. And yes, yes it is. Sorry if I'm a little chunked at the moment. I do have our honorary uh, chunk loader logged in at the moment. He's just sitting at my base recharging batteries. But let's see. Oh yeah. Let's go ahead and bust out one of these blocks. Oh, that way we don't trip the plate. And we break the plate. Let's put up the lights. So we have gold and some bone. Meh. We got the ender, which we already have built. Oh, a step of traveling. <laughs> That's going to be fun. And some iron and some gold. So not too bad. Would have preferred diamonds, but staff of Ender or the traveling staff. It's going to be a very nice addition for us. Let's go ahead and get some of this TNT out of the way here. Always nice to have some spares of this stuff. Collect a few of these stone blocks. There we go. And I got plenty, and I do mean plenty, of cobble. So let's go ahead and just waste some of that getting out of here. All right, we just turned on quarry number two. I just moved it from right over there to here. Not sure why these are still up here. They're supposed to decay, kind of like tree leaves, when I break the quarry. But you know we haven't tried a quarry on 1710 yet so it's probably just kind of a glitch but as you can see this thing's going strong I have reorganized our piping system so now we kind of have a figure here of four directions we got one coming off the top and comes over joins this one here goes into this stack of chests one coming out here that goes into this stack and one coming out here into that stack so we got a pretty organized open design this time a little better on the placement for the engines we got three around here and then one directly underneath this block which is powered by our lever once again we got our pipes destroying all of our cobblestone and dirt at the moment and our gravel we're actually keeping so that we can pulverize that down to flint to be used to process our ore in our sag mill. So we're going to go ahead and let that one run while I go back into the nether because I have to go and make a new portal. And so I get to go find out where it's going to be and dig over to it and get it set up. And it doesn't look like I brought obsidian. Darn it. Alright, back to base. Fortunately, our trip to base is going to be a little expedited because I actually took the time to run some rails. I have these little jogs in here because I have to put these straight rails in there, the detector pads and the gold rail. We have the detectors powering the gold rail so that we don't have powered rails continuously on, which can contribute to lag. So it's just kind of a consideration to the server. Just sawing some wood and no I am not playing these clips out of order. <laughs> I really am that ADD while playing. Right now I just went to get some more wood because it's going to be part of our next project. So we definitely want to be prepared, right? Well we have just constructed another portal and as you can see it's right near bedrock 
And if you know what that means, we are going to build a sky mob farm. But not just any sky mob farm. We are going to build Zuma Void's gold mob farm. Because I don't know about you, but I actually like to use gold. Gold rails and even gold blocks for decoration. I have not had a gold farm before and I quite like the look of this gold farm. Uh, the farm that I was thinking I would make eventually as well, depending on how this turns out, would be using the quarry to basically quarry a 64 by 64 square out of the nether from ceiling to floor. And I did this in our 1.6.4 world, but never had the opportunity to actually build the mob farm after it was hollowed out. And there's always the problem of running into lava. There's so many lava lakes that it's kind of hard to find a 64 by 64 ceiling to floor chunk that doesn't run through the middle of a lava lake. But even if we can get, you know, 80% of that vertical space, I think we could actually get some pretty good results. However, this just requires a lot of obsidian, which our quarry gives us anyway, and I think it would be a rather simple build in that regard. It's definitely going to take some time. It's going to be 67 long by 67 tall, and however many portals to either side we want to make. I kind of like Zumavoid's idea of building four to each side of a center portal line. So I think I'm going to attempt for that. We do have a fair amount of obsidian thus far. I mean, right now I have only brought up 31 with me to build the nether side of this portal. But I have another eight stacks or so from our latest quarries. Well, that's all the time that we have for today, actually. So what we're going to do next time is... We're going to pump the nether. <laughs> I'm actually rather excited to actually do this. And we're going to need a lot of obsidian, probably well over a thousand blocks, so that we can build all the nether portals in our overworld gold farm. But it's going to take a lot of lava. And so we get to set up a nice little contraption to do that using some build craft stuff and some ender IO. I think it's going to be rather exciting. I've already got the pieces put together so we're gonna get that going and we're also gonna start framing out our mob farm as well using that obsidian so be sure to check our next episode and go ahead and like this episode if you've liked what you've seen so far and would like to see more go ahead and comment I do appreciate those as well and if you would subscribe that way you can get the latest and greatest but until then we'll see you next time sucks just getting it off by one spot. Um.